Welcome. This is a video I was asked a while back by a uh, avid follower and friend on how I store my flies. Um, obviously, with all the videos that I do, I have tons of flies that I've tied as well as the flies that I've tied for myself over the years. So I thought I would just do a little bit longer video that would discuss not only my fly storage for the flies from the video, but then also there will be a second part of this in terms of my fly tying materials and how I store that. What you're looking at here, I'm out in my garage, so you're gonna hear some birds and things outside, hopefully no lawnmowers or anything. But this is a cabinet that I built years ago for just my fly fishing gear. On the far end, I've got my waders and boots. I've got my rods, uh, rod tubes, nets, uh, wading bags, things like that in here. These are all dedicated to fly fishing gear and flies. Now, real quick, I'm just gonna jump into how I store the flies from the tying videos. I use these bins. These are a Plano tackle box, bin, whatever you want to call them. Hopefully there's no glare on this. I'll try and, and get that without any glare. This is a Plano model 3700. This one in particular, you can't read it, but it is a 14 inch long by 9.13 inches wide and 1.38 inches high. So you're looking at about, you know, an inch and an eighth inch and a quarter um, high. And that is just perfect. Actually, for some of the flies, like the wet flies and things that, that I tie, you know, they'll fit in here. I could use half that. Um, and that's what I was looking for on these is something really skinny. I don't need a big bulky Plano box because they're just not taking up that much room. But what I do is I tie the flies and they basically get into their own bin. The bin gets labeled as for sale or flies for me or whatever else I'm using them for. And that's how I store all these. Now, I do have some special flies that I tie. As I'm doing these, I save some that are really good for projects for doing framing, for um, sending off to other people, friends, things like this as gifts. So I use these little bins right here. Now, I don't have um, a name for this right now. I, again, down in the description will be a link to the particular model. This one's really nice. It comes with tons of dividers and everything for it, but this works out well, like for some of the Featherwing streamers, Carrie Stevens patterns and things like that for storage. I have some of these also set aside. Like I said, I'll divide them up for just flies that I'm going to you know, frame or do something special with. So these little dividers come in real ha handy. They all stack really nice. They're very sturdy, easy to deal with, and they don't cost too much. That's basically the flies from my fly tying videos, how I organize those. Now, the flies in general, and what eventually happens is some of these flies that I've set aside for me get migrated over to other bins and boxes as I need them, or if I'm going on a trip, or if I want to start using some or something like that. That's what this whole area is. This is storage for flies. It is also storage for fly boxes, as you can see, um, fly bins. I have extra empty boxes up here, I have tons of those. And I have my rods and reels and extra lines and things in bins down here. Inside here, I have taken over the years all of my flies and sorted through them. And I have larger Plano bins. I've got some of the skinny ones like this that I use. This is, this is labeled bass streamers, you know, and I just put those in there. I have a whole host of them, you know, four or five of them that are bass streamers in here. I label them carp flies, bluegill, subsurface, helgramites, salmon flies, egg patterns, all that stuff. Down here, I have dry flies, trout streamers, wet flies, all kinds of stuff down there. That's essentially how I store my flies. Again, taking and putting in these bins 
if you're going to do this for yourself, standardize on the bins you want to use. I like the 3700s because they're real skinny. Almost all flies will fit in those. If you're doing some larger uh, deer hair that you don't want squished or something a little bit nicer, go with uh, you know, a deeper um, Plano bin. But I like the Plano ones. Flame Boo also um, makes some really, really nice ones. Occasionally, you can find these for sale um, real cheap at Cabela's uh, or Bass Pro or something like that. So look around, but try and standardize on what you think you're, you're going to use. There is um, a couple of other bins that I do use. And these, again, I will have down in the description down below. These are a just says storage center. I think they're all made overseas, but this just says storage center, and they have a model here that has all kinds of different compartments in it, uh, which is really, really nice, because if you're just storing just a few small flies, um, I think I have some up here like that. See, I got just a couple of, of these little flies. These are all set aside for different projects or possibly for different friends and people. So that keeps those organized real nice. They also have um, these bins that have a number of rows. Again, I hope you're not getting a lot of glare. These are all open rows. There's no dividers in these. Um, and these I get at the, the container store. I'll see if they're on Amazon. I'll find them somewhere and get a link down in the description for you. These I like also because they're just very narrow. Um, they do have a groove on top, so they they set well on top of each other. There's one that's all open that I use in my fly tying, which I'll mention in the fly tying organization segment of this video. But these are the other ones that I really, really like. Again, you're going to collect a whole bunch of different containers over the years for different things. Use them. But if you really want to get organized, I highly recommend you just start standardizing on some stuff, label everything. I don't have everything labeled on the ends here, but they are labeled. And as you can see, I'm not exactly, you know, that fastidious about always putting things away and always getting all of my flies organized. I would say probably about once a year or so, I'll go through here and, and I'll put things in here or I'll transfer them from these bins into these bins as well as even go through all of the fly boxes that I have and just to organize them, take out flies that were chewed up, maybe repopulate them with some new flies or something like that. But that's my fly storage. I have some of these bins in my tying room that as I'm doing videos, more or less, all of that pile of flies gets put into these bins. So that eventually they come out here and this is where they're all stored. It's pretty straightforward in terms of your flies. Again, I'll mention in the fly tying video uh, organization segment of this, it's really important. Get organized right away. Keep things organized. The more organized it is, the, the easier you're going to get to it. The easier you can get to it, the easier, quicker you're going to take this and your gear, throw it in the car, head out to the water, have some fun. Because that's what it's all about. So. There you have it. That is my fly organization. Let's move over to my tying room and we'll do the fly tying organization segment. So this is basically my fly tying storage. My fly tying room is only about 11 feet by about 11 feet. So it's pretty small. Uh, I have to maximize all the space as much as I can. Years ago, I built this uh, shelf, and it was built around the containers that I had for my fly tying storage at the time. This whole section of it was actually built for fly tying and fly fishing books, things like that. But as you can see, it's been overtaken by fly tying materials. This section here is all of I've got some bucktails and random hair in here. All of this is pretty much larger hackles, my whiting hackles, um, some wopsy, some 
airline Hoffman, that kind of stuff is all through here with a little bit of tools down near the bottom. These were originally built around, this opening was built around a large Rubbermaid drawer. I used to have, you know, the Rubbermaid little things on wheels and everything. And that's what it was built around. After a while, that became too small and cramped, so I actually built these shelves for it. Now, as you can see, my standard, more or less, storage container is these little craft containers. I get these at Michael's. You can get these on sale sometimes for like, you know, five for seven or eight bucks, something like that. They're labeled mostly as a scrapbooking container um, for scrapbook stuff, I guess. But I like them. They're nice and clear. That I get the clear ones, not the colored ones, because then I can quickly see what's in the container. I'm going to try and do this so you don't get any glare. But I also have everything labeled. And this is real important. Make certain you label each of your containers. Now, I have these set up so that basically almost all of my feathered materials are on this side right here. Goose shoulder, uh, turkey duck, uh, schloppen, stuff like that, all, all on this side. I do have feathered material here as well as some hair up here. But then this side is all hair. I got kip tails, I got rabbit, I got deer, I got rabbit strips, and so on and so forth. For me, at least, it just helps me to keep things further divided and organized so that if I know I need a rabbit zonker for this particular fly, I know where I'm going. I don't have to hunt through all of these. Again, extremely important to make certain that you label all of these. That's my major storage. You can't see it in the frame, but on top of these shelves, I actually have another four of these stacked up four deep across just because I've got to every square inch I have to maximize the space here. Two other things, just talking about the fly tying materials. You will find some odd bins every now and again. I think I've got some Plano bins up here for various tools and things like that. Um, those will come in handy. If you're going to design your own shelves, like I did here, keep in mind, design them around your storage containers. These were originally for books, like I said, so I've got extra room here. I just got to try and fill. But standardize on your containers, standardize on something that is going to work for you and still have a fair bit of room for growth because you're going to grow. That's one thing to note. Uh, the second thing is, this is just my personal preference. I don't like to put, contain, put things in a container that goes into a container and then goes into a container. When I have something here like this right here, other than in this case, I have my uh, dubbing dispensers right in here, but I can see all of them real easy. I open it up, I pull it out. My other dubbing and other things like the rabbit or, like I said, the mallard flank right here, I just put those in. There's different ways you can organize some of that if you're going to put a lot of material in there. But the less steps you have to get to that material while keeping it organized, the more likely you're going to use it. So just keep that in mind. Now, two specific containers that I use that uh, for my fly tying organization that I think are important. I had mentioned in the uh, video for my fly storage, these containers right here, this company, I can't remember who makes it. Let me see if I have an empty one. I do right here. This is the storage center. And I had mentioned that they also have one that's totally open. There's no dividers in it. These things are perfect for me for spooled material. They're the perfect height. It fits right in there. I can get a lot. As you can see with this is the uh, Danville four strand rayon. I can get a whole lot in there. It's all nicely organized. They actually stack on top of one another very, very neatly. And those work great for spooled material. 
The other container that I use in a lot of my tying is these craft make containers. These are for my hooks. Now again, I hope you don't have a lot of glare in this. I'll try and get a picture of this to put in the video so you can see it, but there will be links in the description below to these products. This Craftsmate container comes in two main sizes, but it will also come in single strips if you're wanting that. These are perfect for organizing because you can easily put a label right on. The larger ones have a little lip right here you can put the label on, but these just print out your label and put it on the outside of the bin. The nice thing about these is that you can you only have to open one bin at a time if I can do this one handed. So if I need this must add 3366 in a size two, I can take this out. I can open just the one. So if I'm clumsy and I knock this on the ground or the cat comes by and knocks it on the ground, something like that. I only lose that one. I used to have, and I still do have some of the bins. I can't remember who made them. These were, this was almost 20 years ago that I got these to start organizing. But they have a lid that goes across and the whole lid has to come up. So all of those compartments are exposed. You drop that on the floor and you've got, you know, a mess and some aggravation to get that all sorted out. But that's why I like these. These also stack really, really well. These are some old Rubbermaid drawers from a, a tower, and I have them still simply because they fit in here really nice. These compartments in my tying area right here were specifically made to fit these in real nice. I'm actually in the process of redoing this to actually custom build some drawers. As you can see, I have a little extra space here. I just throw in a small single row of the Craftmate um, containers. So that's how I organize most of my hooks. Again, as you can see on the drawers, I have labels for uh, what's in there, the different model numbers and so on. I can't stress enough, having labels for this stuff is, is extremely important. It's just going to keep things organized for you a little bit more and less aggravated because, it, I mean, it's frustrating when you want to tie a fly but you can't find that tinsel or you can't find that yarn or where did that dubbing go that you needed? And you've got to rummage through a bunch of pins and things before you either find it or you don't and you go buy more. So that's the thought behind it. Anyway, that's just a quick overview of the tying area and my storage and organization for my fly tying stuff. Thanks for watching the video. I uh, hope this has given you some ideas in terms of your fly storage as well as your tying material storage. If you're just getting started, stay up on keeping it organized and labeled and everything from, from the get-go. If you put it off and you wait, it just gets to be a bigger and bigger monster that you got to deal with at some time. Keep it organized. It just keeps it simple. You spend more time at the vise having fun. Because just remember, it is fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm.